Hey there, it's Anna. Welcome to the garden. Today I'm popping out here. I really need to water. Um, but before I do, I thought I would stick a few more fall seeds in the ground. I brought a bunch of stuff out here. Um, and I'm not quite sure if I'm going to get all of it into different places today, but I thought I would just stick a few things in. Um, it's kind of tricky this time of year. As you can see, there's still a ton of stuff growing. So I have to kind of find like the nooks and crannies um, where I can plant some things in. This bed is um, still pretty full. I just did an update about all of the seedlings. Um, and I also have a video with all like more about all these varieties that I'm planting. I just wanted to see if the carrots are coming up yet. It doesn't look like anything is germinating just yet. So the first place where I want to try a little bit of an experiment is this um, window box, which is such a fun little planter. It's just like a window box, but I set it on the ground and I've got corn growing in it. And actually, I think a couple of the like zinnias, a couple of zinnias are in here. And then there's a the pumpkin vine it has gone crazy. It's taking over my garden um, and has started to grow through this. But I thought I would put in a little bit of kale. I would love to have kale growing in this window box um, planter. You can see this little rectangular planter in the winter. And I may have to re-sow it, but I figured, I mean, it's pretty shady underneath all of those leaves, but the kale might germinate. It might get started. It's kind of an experiment. I don't really know if that's gonna work, but I'm gonna put just a couple seeds in. So I have, let me grab it here. Dazzling Blue Kale. This is my absolute favorite kale. I love this. It's so um, cold hardy and it's really sweet and delicious like once you get a frost. So I'm gonna throw in like just a few seeds around the base of these corn plants and then assuming everything goes well and the you know the kale pops up and is doing okay when I go to take out the corn I'll just snip it right at the base um, and I won't like rip out the roots of the corn um, so that the kale can continue to grow in this container. That's how I'll kind of manage that. Okay, so here we go. Just a few seeds. They don't need to be buried super deep so that makes it easy. I'm gonna take a few seeds, not too many. This is a little bit of an experiment and just toss a few here. Kind of willy-nilly. And then I'll just scratch the surface a little bit. And then I'll water it in and, you know, we'll see what happens. Next we have this container here. Um, and it was a container I did for fall. I had these little Rubecchias in it and I had some petunias and they're not doing well. But I thought I would put a few of my parsley seeds in and just see if I couldn't get some parsley going for winter. It would be nice to have a big pot of parsley. I'm going to be taking out this tomato that's in here. Um, and so I'll just, again, scratch it in and I'll keep it really well watered. And hopefully some of those um, little parsley seeds will sprout and then I'll have like another succession in this container um, for the winter, fall, winter. Parsley is pretty cold hardy so it should do um, really well in the winter. Okay, the next bed is over here where I took out a bunch of tomatoes and I have planted in some um, collard greens, I have some mustard greens in there. Um, what else do I have? Um, and some mizuna, and I want to see if I can fit a few beets in that bed as well. I think it'd be really nice to have um, some beets, and these are 50 to 60 days to maturity, so maybe I could even harvest them um, before the frost, which would be nice, but if not, they can continue to grow a little bit through the winter. So I'm going to put um, quite, yeah, see if I can kind of like just fit a few in. There is not a whole lot of room. You can see the collards. These are peas, or not peas, beans. Excuse me, beans. And I've got the mustard greens in here and the collards. Everything's kind of a mess in this bed because we still have a lot of these annuals growing and looking beautiful. But I thought I would see if I can just stick a few beets 
<laughs> That's what happens when you try to do this one-handed. I'm just gonna plant a few beet seeds kind of like in and around. These are the bull's blood beets. So I should be able to tell, um, you know, what is a beet because it should have those red leaves and that'll be kind of nice. Um, and I just, I just popped in a few in a few different places. It's kind of fun sometimes just to add things in like that. Like you don't have to plant everything in a neat row. It doesn't have to be perfectly, you know, oriented. You can do really decorative things or you can just stick a couple things in if you have a few little spaces, which is kind of what I did with like these, um, green beans that I have. These I just sort of popped in along the edge and they're actually doing really well um, and coming up nicely and starting to flower. So I should get a decent harvest from that. And that's kind of the thought with the, the beets is like just to pop in a few here and there. And this bed will continue to take more shape as, um, as the fall goes on. Right now we've still got lantanas in there and angelonia, there's basil, there's the, um, so incredible sunflowers. This is actually a salvia and there's some kufia. So there's still a lot of fun stuff going on here, but hopefully there'll be, you know, a beat or two um, just to pop up and that'll be kind of cool. I was just looking, do you see this? This is the pumpkin vine has also gone this way now and started to completely take over. Like <laughs> it's kind of pretty with everything mismatched in there, but um, yeah, the garden's a little wild right now. I have a green stock planter where some of these things are going to go. I'm probably gonna end up planting a lot of like these greens. I'm looking at them. Um, I even have these like little carrots. I don't really have a spot right now where these could go. So I may put them um, in an area like that. I am gonna go and put a tiny bit more lettuce over here in that bed where I have the lettuce starts just to add like maybe a little succession. It might still be pretty, oh, it's too hot for this. I'm actually not gonna start the lettuce. That's something that's really important to check. Like the germination, 50 degrees to 72 degrees, it's not worth it yet. I could start it inside if I wanted to and plant it out, but it's not even worth it for me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save with that, wait on that. Um, I may do, let's see, a little bit of arugula kind of similar to the kale. I want arugula in this bed <laughs> in the fall. Ooh, but right now it's full of zinnias. There's like a little hole here. I think I'm just gonna throw some arugula seeds in there and kind of see what happens. I did try to plant out some of my kale starts. I don't know if they're really taking, they were in, the, most of my starts like still looked pretty good, but these kind of um, had a hard time. I think they got a little bit too big for their, um, uh, tray, but I'm just going to put a little bit of arugula in here and just see. I'll just see if it grows. This is what we call reckless seed sowing. Like just throw it in there. See what happens. I'll water it all in and I got to make sure that I keep this area really well watered um, over the next few days, next week or so. All right, the last thing, a tiny bit of dill. Um, I'm gonna put this in one of my grow bags. Uh, it's looking kind of sad right now because um, I really need to water it. But over here, don't mind, I'm gonna water them in a second. They'll be okay. Mostly they're just hot. It actually doesn't look that dry. I'm just gonna put a little bit of dill in this grow bag and see if we can't get just a little bit started. Um, I got some squash growing in there and that'll grow up pretty tall and probably fill it out. But I would just love to have some dill. Well, actually, this grow bag has some space. This is what happens. I just bring my seeds out and like for the fall garden, I just like, where do I have room? This grow bag, there's nothing growing there. I'm gonna put the dill over in that one. Okay, so I think that's all the seed sowing that I'm gonna do right now. As, as I said, a lot of this is going to grow really well, I think in the green stock. So that's where I'm gonna plant like a lot of these different greens. And as I was kind of saying with the lettuce, like. I don't completely just want to waste seeds. Now, this method of just like throwing things in willy nilly um, is definitely like, well, it's the reckless garden after all, isn't it? Right? Like, maybe things will grow well. Maybe that kale will work. Maybe it'll be way too shaded and it'll just be miserable and won't grow at all. I'm just picking up my seeds here. Um, so, 
it could totally go either way. You have to be kind of willing um, to risk things a little bit, but on the other hand, like germination temperatures, you know, if it says that it won't germinate under 72, there's no point for me to go ahead and put those seeds in the ground and then just like waste that, you know? Um, seeds are not like super expensive, but they're not cheap either. And um, I try to be, you know, respectful of them. So that's all I'm gonna do for now and kind of wait. I'm starting to make my list for September as well of what I wanna plant in here in September. And I'm trying to think through like when I wanna start pulling things out. Um, but I just kind of try to keep the process going, especially with this small space. You can kind of see my, my thought process. I just try to take things out, fill holes, keep it going. And that way I also always have um, just blooms and plants and flowers. I'm looking at my um, not hummingbird butterfly bush, um, which just came back into flower, it kind of like lulled for a minute. And I just have to give you an update on how this is growing in the grow bag. It is doing so well and how beautiful. This is the Pugster Blue, such a gorgeous plant. So beautiful, doing really well in a and grow bag. And these are also doing really well in a grow bag. These are um, eggplants, as you can see, putting on flowers and my squash that I started for the fall garden. So a little update on how they're doing. Looking really healthy, I think. These are the English, um, Gelber Englisher uh, patty pan squash, and they are just, I think, looking beautiful. I'm super pleased with how they're doing. And I did pop in a little cucumber in the back there, and that is coming up too. Uh, so that's super fun. And I've got a bunch of eggplants on the way. So a really cool container shaping up nicely for the fall garden and the eggplants look pretty healthy so hopefully they'll just kind of keep growing um, up until you know a frost anyways now i'm going to water everything because as you can see um we've got a few things needing it and that is going to be really key especially with this kind of heat when you're starting any kind of seedlings um it's really important to stay on top of the water because things can dry out super fast so definitely definitely um, if you're planting seedlings if you're starting your fall garden water 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 make sure nothing is getting too dried out um because of course that'll kill your seedlings so i'm gonna go water thank you so much for watching um and i'll talk to you in the next video Bye bye